Hello, everyone, and welcome to Inside the Outside. I'm Christy Kirk. And I'm Gary Kirk. On this episode, we're going to be talking about everybody's favorite subject, food. So whether you're on the trail or at the house, uh, figuring out what it is that you want to eat can sometimes be a challenge, and making good choices can add even more complexity to that. Wouldn't you agree? You know, finding something to eat isn't my problem. It's finding something good to eat. Those good choices are a challenge for me. Well, and when you say good, it needs to taste good as well as be good for you. And I think that becomes really, really difficult. You know, I I think that that's my challenge. And I don't think that it's there isn't great tasting healthy food out there. I think that I have this mindset that if it doesn't have cheese or butter, it can't possibly be delicious. Well, I would agree. I'm working on that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you can't have those two, you could at least have bacon. Yeah, there you go. And here we are down the road of not great choices. However, gotten a new cookbook recently. You've tasted one of my experiments from the cookbook. Do you remember the muffins? I do. And I will have to say I was not expecting them to taste good, but they did. When you told me what you were making and then you told me where you got the recipe, I immediately said, all right, I need a little butter on mine. (laughs) And I did, admittedly, I put a little butter on my muffin. But And the cookbook is the second one from Shalane Flanagan, who's one of the best American runners, um, long distance runners right now. Also, UNC Tar Heel. That's right. Go Heels. And she has um, two great cookbooks, but the one I'm cooking out of right now is called Run Fast, Cook Fast. Cook Fast. And it has some great fueling recipes. You know, if you're working out, it has some great healthy um, lunch and dinner ideas. And so we're experimenting with some of those. She also has, you know, we've had some experts on before who've talked about liquid hydration when you're on long distance hikes or long distance bike right. rides or Not just water, but various forms of hydration. Well, Shalane has a recipe in there for the hydration drink she makes, and it has tart cherry juice and water and I think either honey or molasses and some salt because, you know, it's an electrolyte replacer and all that. Sounds yummy. Not. Hey, look, it can't be any worse than Gatorade. (laughs) I don't know. Gatorade's pretty delicious. See, I don't, I have a problem with those kind of drinks and I don't want to call Gatorade out specifically because it's not even the one I used this past weekend because I was talking to someone else who's a fueling expert. And with my case and the way I sweat and all of that, they suggested that I fuel more often and I have a sports drink. And I took a a manufactured sports drink with me and like halfway through, it was just gross. Like I didn't want to drink it anymore. And that's defeating the purpose. So I, Shailene, Shailene's cannot be any worse. Um, I'm anxious to try it. I am, again, very cautious. I was cautious with the muffins. They turned out good. They were delicious. I've had multiples of them. Yeah, they're delicious. And um, they're her morning glory muffins. So if you go, both books have a morning glory muffin recipe, but they keep giving you different options to put in them. And And they're tasty and they are filled with good stuff for you. So try those out. We'll link those in our show notes and everything. But another great tip, this is not from Shalane, but um, from an endurance coach that um, has spoken to my running group is about gels. You know, a lot of runners and hikers will buy the gels. And if you like those, go for it. Keep buying them. But there's a really popular gel right now that's honey-based. It's popular with a lot of runners, but it's the same recipe, essential ingredients as Swedish fish. And I was so excited to hear that because running gels are gross. They can be. And I haven't had the greatest experiences with them. I mean, they're fine, but I don't love them. I don't ever go, oh, I can't wait to have a gel. So what happens is, (laughs) you know, I'll run long distances and I'll need that hit of carb, but I won't, I'll put off eating them. But Swedish fish are delicious and they make me happy and they're one of my favorite candies. So I can fuel throughout my run more more efficiently. So there you have it. Tip of the day, Swedish fish. They're they're yummier than a lot of the chews and they're way less expensive and they make you happy. Nothing makes you happy like little gummy fish as you're running. (laughs) I suppose so. Uh, I I will trust you on that. You are definitely more up on this uh, topic than I could ever hope to be. I bought all of my running friends Swedish fish and gave them to them this weekend as we did our long run. Did everybody enjoy them? 
Um, I don't know. You know, we didn't really talk about that afterwards. You were too busy eating your own fish. <laughs> I was too busy eating my Swedish fish to notice what they were doing. No, we ended up running longer than we anticipated. So at the end of the run, it was less about, hey, how was that fueling option? And more like, why did we do that? Yeah. <laughs> I can understand that. Now, I do have to agree with you about the um, sports drinks, whatever brand uh, you want to drink, you know, and if you like them, that's fine. But for me, I just want water. Um, when we go backpacking, I'll often take um, a little powdered drink mix just to qu sort of mix it up. But I don't want that while I'm actually out there hiking. Um, it, it gets kind of cloying and you end up with this sort of syrupy um, film in your mouth that I don't really care for. Um, but after, you know, multiple days, if all you have to drink is water, you really want something different just to mix it up a little bit. So I do like to take those um, powder drink mixes with me. I'll have some coffee in the morning and then, uh, you know, one, uh, maybe two of those powder drink mixes through the course of the day, usually like maybe at lunch or at uh, bedtime, you know, something like that, just to kind of, you know, build back up those electrolytes, hydrate yourself a little bit, but also to just to kind of mix up the flavors. But, you know, the sugary syrupy aftertaste that you're talking about is one of the things you need in these drink mixes sure. because oftentimes we'll get, the, we'll get the sugar free and you actually need the sugars and in fact this endurance coach that um we've been working with lately suggests that you get an, an endurance a sports drink or powders whatever you choose that have at least different two different forms of sugar hmm. so your body can get what what they need so a lot of interesting learning out there tons of contradictory information. The best case is try what works for you. Try it way before you're going on a hiking trip, a, a long hiking trip or a long run. Make sure you train with your fueling options um, way before you do the big thing. You know, I've seen those five pound gummy bears. You could get one of those and just kind of gnaw on it through the course of like a, you know, the AT um, 2000 miles. You just said the key phrase, five pounds. I'm not carrying an extra It gets lighter pounds. with every bite, though. No, 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 no. That's not. <laughs> and, and you'll remember um, our, our professor from UNC who spoke about nutrition said you still want nutrition. You know, there's there are good carbs and there are less good carbs. And I think a giant gummy bear kind of goes to less. I guess you could say Swedish fish do, too. But I'm eating like one every couple of miles, not like the whole bag, you know? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some real food because the Swedish fish are fun. Maybe they work for you. Maybe they don't. Anyway, moving on, you still have to eat on the trail. And it can be a challenge because one, you're starving and two, you're eating something dehydrated. So you want to enjoy it. Yes. And so we had a fun little family taste test with our mac and cheese connoisseurs. Yeah, the most discerning um food critics we could find are our children. Uh, they have very limited palates and um, they are going to be critical of anything that you put down on a table. I think most kids are like this. So what we decided to try to do was pick one of those foods that they love, most people love, uh, macaroni and cheese, and put it up to a taste test with the macaroni and cheese gurus in our house. So to do this, we got a bag of Mountain House Backpacker's Pantry, a Kraft Macaroni and Cheese cup, which I've used on backpacking trips before. And then just to kind of mix it up, too, we put what uh, our kids' favorite is KFC Macaroni and Cheese. Now, it, it hurts my feelings to say that because I pride myself in making some damn good macaroni and cheese. And most people agree, but in our household, our kids would rather have KFC macaroni and cheese than the stuff that I pour my heart and soul into. Yeah, and I don't like mac and cheese at all. So the only mac and cheese that I like is yours. So I think yours is really good. It's made with real food. But I was, <laughs> um, the KFC was kind of our ringer in the test. And then I was probably um, the one who skewed all the results because like I said, I'm not a mac and cheese person. I wasn't really raised eating mac and cheese. I can't relate to that. I, I lived on macaroni and cheese, just like our kids do. But, um, you know, so anyway, with this taste test, 
We did it blind. Um, we prepped all the, the food ahead of time, put them in uh, little cups with numbers on them and served them. And then to mix it up, since I was the one serving all the cups, Christy went and made my uh, round of cups so that uh, I didn't know what had went in there. I will say that every one of us was able to identify the brand of macaroni and cheese just by looking at it. But that's not entirely true. We could, everyone could identify the craft and the KFC, but the two hiker dehydrated True. ones, we didn't know um, brands, but we knew that they were the hiking food. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To, to clarify that. Yeah, you are right. Okay. So. You want to say that again for everyone? No, I, I'm good. It's out there. It's been recorded. It's on tape. We'll play it back several times. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> so do you want to tell everyone who won? Well, it was KFC. Yeah, that was hands down the winner. Um, our 12 year old is the king of mac and cheese. He would eat only mac and cheese if we allowed it. And KFC hands down his favorite. And so just to provide a few quotes about the KFC macaroni and cheese to get things started here. Um, our 12 year old, his quotes were, oh, my God, it's really good. It's amazing. I love it. Our daughter, who is 17, I expected her to also be elated about it, but her biggest quote was, yeah, this is edible. It's it's creamy. I, I like it. I would eat it again. Um, Christy, she said, creamy, very artificial. It has an artificial taste. I, w I, I didn't enjoy it. And then her oldest son, he said, yeah, this is creamy. It's edible. I'd eat it again. So they may not sound like overwhelming um, votes of confidence in this one, except for our youngest. But, you know, that is his absolute favorite. Yeah. But it did come in second for almost everyone else. Yes. And, and that's primarily, I think, because of that creamy texture. Yeah. You know, when it comes to food, you're going to eat with your eyes and then, you know, it has to have a good flavor, but also to that mouthfeel. It has to it has to be pleasing. Otherwise, you're not going to really like it. Yeah. And it had the best texture. You're never going to take it on a backpacking trip. But it, it was a good way to set sort of like that baseline to say, all right, here's what you're up against. Right. So now let's dig into the three that we would actually take. Um, I've taken all of these on backpacking trips before, except for the backpacker's pantry. That was my uh, first experience with the backpacker's pantry. So let's get into that. I'm going to say... Our number two mac and cheese and the top dehydrated mac and cheese surprised me because this was my absolute least favorite. <laughs> I thought it was disgusting and it had a weird yellow color and it tasted like you put pasta and stovetop dressing and mixed them together. It was very off-putting and strange. However... The kids loved it. Yeah. So this was the backpacker's pantry. And uh, a few comments on that one. Um, our daughter said that she liked that it had chunks of cheese in it and that it tasted like a holiday dish, even though it was ugly, though. Everybody unanimously said that it didn't look as good as it tasted. Um, Christy said that it had a weird color. Dylan said, oh my gosh, this looks weird. It does not give me a happy stomach. Um, Jack said, uh, our oldest, said that it was his favorite. It had a good flavor. It doesn't look like a normal macaroni and cheese. But the thing that we all sort of agreed upon is it had this sort of chicken stock, stovetop stuffing sort of flavor to it that none of the others had. And that's sort of where my daughter was saying, this sounds like, a, or this tastes like a holiday dish because it had that stovetop stuffing kind of uh, feel and, and flavor to it. And it was that flavor that either made people love it or, or dislike it. it. Yeah. Because the youngest and I did not care for it. And, but the rest of you liked that flavor. Now, I liked it. It wasn't my favorite, um, but I did like it. And what I was thinking was it would be better if you were mixing it with something else. If you were to put some kind of meat in there, let's say you were to put some uh, chicken chunks in it or something like that, then it's more of a, a pasta dish. This to me was not what I would call macaroni and cheese because it had that other flavor in there. It wasn't bad. It was just 
odd when you're thinking of, you know, this traditional macaroni and cheese flavor that you're expecting. Right. And our third um, pick was Mountain House. Yes. So the Mountain House, I have the most experience with. Um, you you and I have eaten a lot of different Mountain House. I, don't, I think this was your first macaroni and cheese Mountain yeah, House. Because I don't eat mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> but I've taken it on several backpacking uh, trips before. Um, I've often uh, taken it on our bikepacking trip in Cranberry Glades. On that particular trip, I would buy the uh, large tin of it uh, so that you could just cook right in this uh, huge tin. And it was enough to feed like, you know, uh, an army uh, out of this stuff. It's very creamy. It has a really good flavor to it. But there is a certain amount of graininess to it that if it wasn't for the graininess, I would like it better than the KFC because it actually has a better flavor than the KFC. But there's just it's not quite as creamy. However... Putting this up against, you know, backpacking uh, food, dehydrated food, it is probably one of the best macaroni and cheeses you could ask for. I would say that, it, it, one, in our taste test, it suffered because it didn't get cooked all the way. So Even was, though we did cook it by the exact directions on the package for all of them. Right. But those exact directions didn't cook this all the way. Right. So I, I don't know where the fail was, but the Mac was chewy. So that immediately is off-putting. It should have rehydrated for probably another five minutes or so. Yeah. yeah. So the texture wasn't there for me. Um, I didn't like the graininess, but I did think it was creamy. And I did think the cheese flavor was one of the better cheese flavors. But um, honestly, it and uh, Backpacker's Pantry, I never want to eat again. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the one that really shocked me, especially with the kids, it didn't shock me for uh, you or I, but the Kraft macaroni and cheese. Our kids live on these little microwavable cups. It doesn't make us proud parents to say our kids live off of these little microwavable cups, but sometimes you got to pick and choose your battles. And this is one that we were never going to win. And uh, I was shocked that it came in last place. They love this macaroni and cheese, but when they had all four of these options laid out in front of them, I'm not shocked that KFC won. But I was really shocked at how many voted with that backpacker's pantry over top of the craft or the mountain house over top of craft. Right. I was, too, because the craft was the one that I found most palatable. And <laughs> and I was laughing about that because I'm not a mac and cheese eater. I, I'm not a fan of it. So maybe I liked the craft because it did have the le the l least amount of flavor. It had the least amount of egregious things like the texture was OK. There wasn't anything weird with the cheese, probably because there wasn't that much. Um, it shockingly did not have a weird artificial flavor, even though my son thought it did. But um, so I thought it was the least um, painful out of all of them. <laughs> but the truth is, is I didn't really like any of these. And, and right. I would. I You're not a mac and cheese person. No. And I wouldn't choose to eat these. But what I found interesting is that everyone had a different favorite. Yeah. Because um, our teen daughter really loved the Mountain House. No, no. She she really loved the Backpacker's Pantry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, our our teen daughter really loved Backpack Backpacker's Pantry. Um, and our, so did the oldest. Uh, so did the oldest. He loved Backpacker's Pantry. Um. Dylan, he knew it was KFC. You cannot fool him. He loved it. Yeah. He was on board with it from the beginning. And um, and then I like Kraft and you like Mountain House. So we all had different things. So what it shows is that everyone wants something different in their mac and cheese. And there is something out there for you. Yeah, I don't think you could go wrong with any of these options. They're all going to be um, what they are. They're going to provide you a carbohydrate boost. Uh, they're going to provide you a certain amount of nutrition. Um, but you should definitely try to get out there and experiment with some of these different foods. Uh, we'd love to hear some feedback from you about some of your favorites uh, whenever you go out on the trail. And we have a couple more taste tests lined up. Our next one is going to be spaghetti. That's another staple in our house. If you ever say, hey, what do you guys want for uh, dinner this week? Spaghetti is always on the list. So we're going to give a couple of those a try. If you've got any that you'd like to see us give a try, definitely let us know. Absolutely. And you know, I do have some strong opinions about everything, but about the mac yeah. and cheese. But, I th but again, I want to reiterate that the idea that there's something for everyone it's really true. So, you know, do your own taste test. Try out all these different brands and see what really resonates with you because they all have different 
pluses and minuses. And, um, you know, at the end of a long day on the trail, I'd probably be happy to eat any of them, especially if someone else rehydrated them and made them all. <laughs> and um, because you're hungry and the food tastes better on the trail than it does. Yeah. When you're absolutely exhausted and you're on the trail, uh, just about anything is going to taste good to you. Yeah. But uh, I would be happy with uh I'm not going to say I'd be happy with the craft if I had the options. If I was going to pack one of these, I would be packing the the mountain house or the backpacker's pantry. Um, I would I would probably supplement the backpacker's pantry with some other type of little protein or something in there. Even if you took some beef jerky and tore it up and dropped it in there and let it rehydrate along with it, I think it would it would add something to it since there is that different flavor. Mm. Yeah. But the uh, the mountain house, uh, it, it's it's a it's a camp favorite uh, in the Kirk household. Yeah, and it got rave reviews here at the house. Anyway, everyone's different. That's the beauty of of doing these things. And hey, everyone had a different dinner tonight because everyone had a different favorite. They could finish off their mac and cheeses. <laughs> Not a lot of cleanup for us, so that's a win. That's a big win. Inside the Outside is proudly brought to you by the following sponsors. Terrapin Outfitters. Terrapin Outfitters is an innovative company that specializes in developing clothing and gear that enhances people's enjoyment of outdoor activities. Check them out at terrapinoutfitters.com. Outdoorsman Outfitters. Outdoorsman Outfitters is a cottage gear company designing, manufacturing, and delivering high quality backpacking and camping gear to help you enjoy the outdoors. Check them out at outdoorsmanoutfitters.com. If you're enjoying the podcast, please share the show and leave us a positive review wherever you listen. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Look for the handle Inside the Outside Show. For links to these sponsors and other things we talk about on the show, check out our show notes on our website at InsideTheOutsideShow.com.